massive drive and passion to stay relevant in the world of sport. And uh, yeah, we'll have a nice chat today. So thanks for having me. Thanks. Hey guys, welcome to this new video. And uh, this video, as you might have already seen, the title is going to be about Mr. Suhil Chindok and the things that he shared with us in the uh, masterclass. If you do not know what I'm talking about, go on my channel, go into the videos list, and you will find a vlog for the day that we spent at uh, the campus and we interacted with Mr. Suhil Chandok. Alright, let's start off this video. So, most of us know Mr. Suhil Chandok as a very famous sports TV presenter. We have seen him in multiple sporting events such as the IPL, the ISL, uh, the Rio Olympics and whatnot. He has presented so many events that it's very hard to keep track of it. Alright, but these are the things that we know. Now, let me tell you some things that we don't know. He's played for two years for the Royal Challengers Bangalore in the IPL. Even I didn't know that. But upon research, I found out that he was a very good cricketer. And, and unfortunately, due to a knee injury and multiple surgeries, he had to step out of it. Well, he did not give up and he ventured into multiple fields, which is, you know, something to learn from. Once a plan A doesn't work, you gotta adapt, you gotta survive and, you know, you gotta make a killing out of it. So, he has also uh, been seen on the famous TV show called Shark Tank where investors invest in startups and he has successfully pitched there with his co-founder and they raised investment as well. So, that is also very impressive. Another interesting fact is that he has also acted in a Tamil film. That's right, a Tamil film and with the superstar Ajit Kumar. The name of that film, can you guess? No? Alright, I'll give you 10 more seconds. Oh, never mind. The name of the film is called Veeram and he played Ajit Kumar's brother and people loved his role. But after that he got presented with the opportunity to be a sports presenter for Star Network and for Star Sports and he never looked back. After the film, he got an opportunity to become a sports presenter on Star Sports and he has never looked back. And we all know how much work he has done and he is a very famous TV presenter. Mr. Suhail is also currently the CEO of Umumba, right, which is a very famous Kabaddi team. And I just want to say that from being a commentator on uh, Pro Kabaddi League to becoming an owner of a Kabaddi team, becoming the CEO of the Kabaddi team, that is quite a journey and that's something that we all can take inspiration from and learn from. And yeah, let's move forward with the video. This sort of facility when I was uh, coming through the ranks. Uh, I'm uh, an undergrad and in stop there and I've learned from the world of sport. So I think you guys have a great opportunity to have a structured place which can also point you in the right direction given your passion for sport. So uh, make use of it, enjoy it. Uh, you've got to have a massive drive and passion to stay relevant in the world of sport. And uh, yeah, we'll have a nice chat today. So thanks for having me. Thanks, so as you saw there, Mr. Suhail mentioned that he wished that when he was coming up through the ranks that he wished that there would have been courses and there would have been institutes where he could have gone and done some sports management and I feel that uh, that speaks volumes and we are very lucky you and I who want to consider a course in uh, such a field such as sports management long back back in the days no one would have thought that you know something like this exists or what is the point of doing it but today it is very much relevant and it does exist and if you google it in India itself there's so many places which provide such courses in fact I'm studying at one of the best courses in Asia and I'm having a blast because I am learning something that I love I'm learning about the business of sports I'm learning about the marketing side of sports I'm learning about so many various angles and there will be a podcast coming up soon and a separate video coming up soon on the uh, benefits of doing sports management on the uh, things you can do after the course so that will be a separate video but yes Mr. Suhail rightly pointed out that back in the day such facilities did not exist and now they do and to stay relevant in the world of sports you need a lot of passion you need grit you need uh, you know just discipline and everything else to stay relevant in the world of sports because sports is fun yes but Working in the sports industry demands as much or even much more than what any un, un, any other industry would, you know, uh, ask of you. The, the dome at the NSCI, honestly, it's giving me goosebumps now because 
it was the first semblance of belief that I think all of us had that we were onto something quite special. I think none of us knew, honestly, none of us knew uh, what could come of it. Uh, and kudos to everyone that worked on BKL. So here we have seen Mr. Suhil talking about how his journey began with the Pro Kabaddi League and he is getting goosebumps just uh, remembering that first night at the NSCI which is a venue here in Mumbai where all the Pro Kabaddi matches happen and he recalled how when the lights came on he got goosebumps and you know they saw that NBS style product that had been created for a fast paced action packed a sporting event with a sport such as Kabaddi who no one would have really thought Na right now we know that Kabaddi is like you know after the IPL the Kabaddi is the most watched sport in the country in fact IPL does get eyeballs but even some major cricketing events have been surpassed by Kabaddi that's the craze for pro Kabaddi league just like the IPL the pro Kabaddi league has changed the lives of the athletes that play in it it has given uh, hopes and aspirations to people who played that sport you know because it is such an indigenous sport so it's like an ancient sport that has been played since thousands of years ago and still it was not getting that kind of recognition in our country that it was supposed to it was not viewed as something that could be televised or that could be marketed but the pro kabaddi league did that and uh, it has changed the lives of the athletes like i said before uh, the athletes who were scared to go into the five-star hotels before now they drive around in Mercedes and BMWs where pre in the first season where the highest bid was for 12 lakhs now you see some athletes going and selling for I think around 2 crores 2.5 crores or don't quote me on the numbers but and the Pro Kabaddi League is here to stay and Mr. Suhail Chando was part of that when it started when the Pro Kabaddi League started, it had its share bit of problems. Uh, it had competitor leagues such as the World Kabaddi League, the Super Kabaddi League and they were not just holding matches in India but they were holding matches around the world in arenas such as the O2 Arena. For those who do know the O2 Arena or do not know the O2 Arena, we it's huge, it's freaking huge. And over there, the attendance used to be some 14-15 people who would come to watch the match. I mean, and when, if you see a Pro Kabaddi League match, they have gone to centers of India where no one else has gone before. They have gone to Patna where, uh, yeah, the stadiums are smaller, but when 2,500 people fill that stadium, it looks like it's filled with thousands of people, right? So that's the kind of brains that went behind it. That's how the product was packaged. It was always on the move. It was not just in one city and at one center. It happens all around the country. And the Pro Kabaddi League is a product which uh, deserves to be, you know, researched upon and because after the IPL this is the only most uh, financially su sustainable and viable product yes the ISL is getting there but uh, that's a different business model and the Pro Kabaddi League is a completely different case study and yes there will be videos on it as well coming up and stay tuned for that so let me ask you what are some of the challenges you're facing <laughs> <laughs> my first time on doing it so it's a challenge for me what are the challenges like what, what, what made you nervous? What is, what made you excited? What, what, what challenges have you faced? Uh, what made me excited is that I'm meeting Mr. Sohail Chandu today. <laughs> what made me nervous is front of the audience. That's it? Only that part? Yeah. So what if I took the audience away, you won't be nervous? No. Okay. You'll be okay? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> okay. You know, so, so there you know then this is your limitation, right? Knowing that there's an audience. So now how do you work with that audience, right? Do it more often. Have chats with random people. Um, speak to a mirror. It's funny, like I, I don't watch back most of my shows at all unless I think I could have done something better or something else uh, or I've really had fun interaction I want to watch it back. Uh, but I think initially it's very important to watch things back. Practice in front of a mirror. It's, it's, it's tough enough honestly to face yourself and look at yourself doing it. Put a camera in front of you, open that up, flip the, uh, the, the camera, do pieces to camera, uh, get a bunch of your friends who will make fun of you also. Right? And friends are unforgiving, we know it. Right? Um, I, I can see you, I already know it. I, 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 the one of the things I do is I look around at body language a lot, and I've already noticed it. You've been looking at one of your friends here for, for approval of a, something or other. <laughs> so, so, you know, so there's clearly, you know, I know that there's things that happen generally, right? And that is a challenge. I look back at some of the stuff I did in 2014, 
and I looked at it, what the hell was I doing? You know, and I, I used to be so nervous, one of the first things I did, uh, actually in terms of TV, was a one minute recording, right? And it had to be timed to exactly one minute. So you get a count from 50, 10, 9, 8, and you have to stop on one. You can't stop on three, you can't stop on two, you have to stop on one, right? Um, and that's one of the things I used to, that was the first thing I did um, for a show called Star Power back in 2014. Uh, <laughs> so it was sort of a twist of fate, destiny as you might call it. Um, I wonder now why I didn't think about it sooner in life. But it's funny, I learned on the job, as I learned on the job with most things that I've done. But you know, to me it's seeing a door, seeing an opportunity and saying, you know what, why not? Not why. I've always been a why not person. Right in life, I've always been someone who who tries to look at the positive side of life. Uh, it's hard sometimes. We have setbacks, and I've, trust me, I've had my share of ridiculous setbacks. And I'd love to have been sitting here as an IPL player still and, and talking to you from that lens. But things happen. Life changes. Life sends you and shoves you on a different path, and you've got to find a way. But I think that therefore you've got to gain experience. And today I'm not nervous at all. But I turn up and the camera's there. And you with experience, right? I have today the conviction that even when I have Graham Smith or Brett Lee or Brian Lara standing there, they were the best at what they do. I think that I'm one of the best in the country at what I do. And you have the conviction in your skill set, then they have the respect for you that they are good at what they do, but they are with someone who believes that they are one of the best at what they do. So if you believe that you're the best to sit here in, in front of this audience versus everyone else that's here, believe it. The minute you have that conviction in your own self, that self-belief, You'll be out there and you'll have your questions with more punch. You'll have that question with saying, you know what, I deserve to ask you this. I earned my seat. If you can tell yourself that you earned that seat, and that comes from hard work, it comes from conviction, it comes from self belief, it comes from working day in and day out, it comes from knowing that you've given 100%. Now, the reason. Well, I don't think uh, anyone else could have uh, said that any better. But yeah, I'll try to summarize that. He said that, uh, you know, uh, when you got to approach a problem, you got to first know your limitations, right? You got to know what makes you nervous. Like, uh, for example, my friend Rylan, who studies with me at the same institute, he uh, he was asked that uh, what is the limitations that he's facing, what's making him nervous. And uh, once he said that, you know, speaking in front of an audience is making him nervous. And if that was taken away, he would be doing a better job. So then uh, Mr. Suhail rightly advised him that, you know, uh, practice more of it. Uh, practice in front of your friends. Yes, friends will make fun of you, but they will also be telling you the right things that you can work on and um, record yourself and analyze. And uh, it's thanks to this session with him that uh, I, because this idea was germinating in my head for a long time that you know I want to do this on YouTube. I want to do this on YouTube. So many people are doing it. Why not me? And exactly that he said that as well that don't be a why person be a why not person and if any opportunity comes then always be like why not and i'm like yeah why not i've got the means i've got the knowledge i can i think i speak decently so why not let's start doing this on youtube and when i heard uh, mr suhail that day i think it just it was like a signal right that yeah let's go let's start this so yes and uh, you gotta have conviction in your skill set like he said that uh, you can put him in the room with the world's best cricketers and he would not be nervous because he knows that he's the best at what he does and that instills a sense of belief in those people as well that you know we are with someone who knows his shit and uh, we gotta bring our A game to the table as well and yeah finally just believe in yourself and know that you deserve your place once you've put in the hard work once you've uh, done your research you've done everything that's required to be done you know you could check off uh, all the tasks that need to be done in order for you to be prepared on that final day then you just got to believe that you know you've earned it and to be honest I've experienced this myself I've given you know for example when we used to go to school and give some exams and uh, when we used to be fully prepared we always used to, you know, uh, attempt the paper with so much confidence because we knew that we, you know, uh, deserve the results, we deserve good results because we've put in the hard work, we've studied. And opposite to that, when we did not put in the hard work, when we didn't study so much, the results that we got, we deserve that as well. But yeah, uh, also I would like to say that after that I had asked him another question about the growth of uh, grassroots sports, uh, grassroots athletes in the country and how pro kabaddi approaches recruiting uh, talent
from the remoter parts of the country because India is huge and we are the most uh, populous country in the world now. So how do they actually approach a uh, talent acquisition? Cricket has a very structured approach now. You play district, you play state, you play uh, Ranji, then you play IPL and then India and you know various methods. But in Kabaddi, how is it? So he, he told us that there are uh, some challenges that still exist but there is an initiative called Yuva Kabaddi where, peer, where athletes can sign up and get financial aid as well as well as get a stage to showcase their talent, a platform to showcase their talent. So that is something that all uh, Kabaddi athletes that uh, are playing the sport can look up and if we have people around you, if you have people around you who do play the sport, there you can tell them about Yuva Kabaddi. Just Google it and go about it. So overall, this was a very interactive session uh, and a very knowledgeable session from someone who is currently in the industry. He knows the ins and outs of it. He's been doing it for a long time. The amount of learning that uh, all of us received, and I hope I managed to pass some on to you as well, uh, that uh, it's just invaluable the experience he shared the anecdotes he shared i could not record the whole session this was a very long session i was doing gross listening in myself but i thought that you know i would get some recording so i would be able to share with you people uh, yeah so you can just uh, follow his journey as well there's a lot of things to learn from him the way he presents himself on tv the way he speaks the way he thinks now business wise as well because he has seen how everything functions so that is something that we can all learn from him and I personally look forward to interacting with him uh, much more in the future. And I hope you guys like this video, I hope this was useful to you. So give this a thumbs up, like it, share it with your friends, share it on your social media and do not forget to subscribe. Please subscribe, this is a new channel and I hope this grows into something that I've envisioned it. All kinds of content is coming up, we'll be having vlogs, we'll be having such interaction between you and I about the things that I learn on a daily basis about the things about the sports industry podcasts are going to be coming up soon about again the sports industry and things around it how it works we're going to be having people from the marketing side of sports we're going to be having people from the sponsorship side and so many different verticals in sports and I hope I will be able to add value to your lives on sports content and the sports business so yes, signing off for now, but do like, share and subscribe. Peace out.